Hey guys, my name is Nakaya Beeman or Ms. Beeman to my students and I'm a third year teacher going into my fourth currently at the time of this video and I would like to share some of the things that I learned on my journey to become a teacher and some of the things you may agree with, you may not, um, and you may have more to add so whatever it may be, comment, like, and subscribe for more videos and stay tuned for more. First thing I want to talk about is actually reading the story. If you are going to review a text for its literary element, you have to read your prepared text first. Point blank period. Please do not think you can get around it. It kind of short shortens the students on what they can get with their time and with your effort. So go ahead and read the text first. And the second thing that I would stress is to actually outline the text before giving it to the students so as you're going through and looking for all those literary elements go ahead and annotate the way that you want the students to annotate so they could be able to understand you much clearer as you're going through the text and you can also know what's coming before it comes and you don't have to struggle to give the students what they need in an instructional way so please be sure that you outline the text for all those ele literary elements so you can be prepared for the student. Third, what I would do if I were you and I was going into instructing literary elements, I will also go ahead and get my question stems out. So question stems are things like sentence starters, but they often are used on tests or prepared tests um, for major state exams and things like that, they use question stems that differ from text to text as in the content that will be in the question, but all the same, they're looking for the same thing, they're worded the same way. So they're sentence starters, but they're used for tests um, and they're adjusted to the standard and they are adjusted based on the text that's being given. So I would get my question stems out and really look for what the text will be using more so than others. So I would know what to hit in a major way rather than, you know, emphasizing standards or literary elements that might not be tested as much or you're going to be assessing the students on as much. So be prepared for that. What I will also do is I will also make sure my instruction flows. The students need to understand that and literary elements all flow into one each other, one another. So theme is fed by um, characterization. It's fed by um, the mood, the setting. It's it's fed by um, other literary elements. It makes up and enriches the actual theme. So you have to understand that all of these can be taught in isolation, and that some of your instruction will be set on more than one literary element and you have to be prepared for that and the students need to understand that they flow into one another they all depend on one another you can't have one without the other so be prepared for that the next thing is kind of controversial in the sense that common core and the other state standard sets want you to be able to thoroughly assess the student on whatever standard that may be and that also includes literary elements but what I would suggest is that the students have to memorize and understand the literary element I would say that again memory yes they have to understand and memorize the terminology before they're able to do it because if they don't know one literary element from the another it kind of ruins the whole point. It's like they can put the concept out, they know the concept, but they don't know the concept by name. So when you're reading assessment items, they can say, they can infer what the answer is, but you want to be able to look at the question and be sure of what the answer is because you know what a theme is, you know what characterization is, you know what plot is. So be sure to hit on that. The students must memorize and understand that actual literary element in order to really grasp the concept. The next one, the next one you have to remember when you're actually instructing and considering literary elements. You have to be able to differentiate for your ELLs, 
your um, remediation, your enrichment. You need to be able to actually have vocabulary walls that are interactive. The kids need to have no cards for terms like these two. These are academic terms that are only essential to Eng English, so they won't be learning them in other classrooms. So you need to be prepared to be able to emphasize that and have resources ready for those differentiated learners so that they can be able to understand the concept of literary elements because it applies, they have to understand those too when it comes to the assessment. The next one that I suggest is, and this is one of my favorites, is that music makes a difference. Teachers all, all over the world are putting spins on their instructional strategies and even if you don't call yourself that creative, you can also assume that other resources might be out there for you too to kind of copy, you know, teachers. We, we, we got to steal some time so we can copy those instructional strategies and put them in our own classrooms, whether it be remixes to popular music or little uh, nursery rhyme sayings that might be able to help the students remember their literary elements, please keep those in mind. Music really helps when it comes for students really coming to understand those literary elements and keep an open mind with it. You never know what you might find. Next is acronyms matter, okay? So acronyms could be good for you, it could be good for the students, even if you don't feel musical in a way. Acronyms can definitely help you out with instructing on literary elements. It can, it can also serve for the purpose of narrowing in on the instructional um, literary elements that you're going to be focusing on in your instruction as opposed to having a whole glossary at the end of the textbook full of literary elements and trying to get through all of them. You can have those essential ones that you want to focus on. So come up with a good acronym and give it to the students and it can also be good for you too as you move forward trying to see what you can prioritize. A lot of teachers might not agree with me on this one too, but that is okay. I welcome all comments and concerns in the comments. So. What I will also do is use tutorials, if you have in-school tutorials or after-school tutorials, to really emphasize retention um, of the terminology. So I'm talking remembering the definition, having note cards out, actually going toe-to-toe -to -toe with those, you know, especially with your lower learners. So I actually recommend that your tutorials be reserved until that student can show some proficiency with remo remembering those terms because a lot of the tests will be based on the terminology itself or a different um, phrasing of that terminology in the test. And that's half the battle, knowing what the question is being asked. So I would be prepared, personally, to use my tutorial time to actually re have the students retain information and memorize the information and then use it to really hit home when it comes to usage in the classroom. Thank you all for watching my video, and if you want to see more, you have any more recommendations, comments, questions, or concerns, just be sure to like, comment, subscribe, um, and I will see you guys next time.